everybody, welcome to the Crochet Lovers Crochet Podcast, episode number 23. Hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's currently 5.58 in the morning. I think it's important to tell you that um, I've been pulling all nighter watching the Harry Potter movies that I've gotten from my public library, and I thought it was a good time to stop you know, to pause the movies and to film a podcast episode. So the reason I'm telling you this is because I've been working on some crochet things all night and I just have a basket I brought up with me and I'm just gonna, you know, show you everything from there. So I mentioned it a couple times here and there. I mentioned some Harry Potter things like Gryffindor. Oh, these look like good Gryffindor colors. Um, little things like that on the podcast before, but if you didn't know, I'm actually a Harry Potter fan. I'm on book five at the moment, and I'm watching movies one, two, and three at the moment, so there we go. And if I remember one of these other times, I'll show you some pottery that I made of some Harry Potter related, so yeah. So the first item I have to show you is a dishcloth, and actually these are all dishcloths, but this right here is knitted and was used with the Filka by Lion Brand. I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's 50% cotton, 50% polyester. I got it for $124 and it's originally $4.99. And this is in the colorway Dill Pickle. And I didn't use a lot of this at all barely any. So I followed a pattern for this off Ravelry and I'll leave that in the description box below. I don't have the knitting needles with me but if you look at the pattern and you want to know what knitting needles I use, I use the recommended knitting needles that they said to use. <laughs> okay so here's like the right side and I'll post a picture because I bet you you can't tell the actual design on here at all, but the, I actually like the wrong side a lot better. So I, don't, I have lots of lights blaring over here because even though it's like six in the morning, it's still not bright enough for me to film without having some lights on in the background. Okay, so let me see if I can show you this. Okay, so how it it's stockinette right here, garter stitch. And then right here is supposed to be seed stitch, but it just turned out as ribbing. So I l figured that if I want to practice knitting a little bit more, I would have to work on my seed stitch. So I'll keep that in mind for future. And then this other coordinate is a heart. So the heart looks better with the stock in it, in my opinion. But I actually want you to see it with the uh, garter stitch side. So there's that. Like I said, I'll post a few pictures if I haven't posted them already. And I finished this earlier on in the week. I wasn't quite sure. I don't know, I'm kind of afraid to actually use this as a dishcloth because of the polyester. It's 50% cotton, 50% polyester, and I know what 100% cotton works like, but I don't know what that kind of blend, how it's going to turn out. And I don't really know how to read wash instructions on the yarn label. So even though it says machine washable and dryable though, it doesn't exactly say, like there's different temperatures on a washing machine, drying machine and stuff. It doesn't say what would work best for it, if that makes any sense. I'm sure it does. So the reason I'm saying this is because I, my other dishcloth that I made, I gave them to my mom for us to use. Um, after we use them, we like to, you know, put them through the wash and dryer to you know, 
clean them. And they always get very hard and thick. It's not the same texture as it was before. And I'm afraid that might ruin the dishcloth, this one, considering uh, the fiber. So I haven't washed a polyester fabric before. So we'll have to see how this turns out. Maybe we can just wash it, but then have it air dry or something. I know it's something to keep in mind in the future. Yeah, but here's this. This took me a couple days. I remember I stayed up until like 3 in the morning knitting, watching Supernatural. And then the next day, I, as soon as I woke up, I finished it. And it didn't take me very long. But, uh, yeah, this is a really good beginner's pattern. And if you're learning to knit, all you have to learn how to do is the how to knit and how to purl. And it's very in-depth. It teaches you how to cast on, cast off. I mean, bind off, I think it is. I don't know any knitting terms. It teaches you how to do everything, and it's a really good pattern, and I forgot the name, but it's going to be in the description box below. So, here you go. There is that. I'll put this over here. So, you're probably wondering, ooh, what are these pretty things? <laughs> these are some dishcloths that I've been making lately. I have four of them over here, and I'll show you these first. Let me pull the yarn out that I used just to save everyone's time. The sticky note is the color changes repeat that I wrote down. I don't know if you can see that or not. That way, in case I forgot, I had it with me. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to talk about these first. I'm going to find this real quick. Okay, so it originally started off as me getting inspired to start working on some items for a future store that I may or may not be planning. And part of that was dishcloths. And so I pulled out some cotton yarn and I started working on it and this is what I came up with and this is the first one that kind of triggered the rest of them so far it's black and then mint with the alternate and I'm like you know what why not just make another dishcloth but just the alternate pad you know I'll switch the colors around and everything so that's what I did and then, if I were to sell these, I would sell these as a set together. The little bow. There's these. And the yarn that I used, this mint blue, or like that blue right here, is uh, yarn spray. <laughs> of course, the inspirations is the Burnett Handicrafter Cotton. In the colorway robin's egg and there's approximately 80 yards in this and this was a full ball when I got it when I first started using it and in case you're wondering I posted a mini this was one of my minis my mini Michaels haul but I don't know how much this is originally but I got it for 99 cents so yeah, you're probably going to be seeing more of this. And the black, I actually used it in my skein. I had, I grabbed my black that was already in use, but I grabbed this black that's by Reup, Landrin Reup, with me. So I got the label for the black one. Now... Like I said, I was watching some Harry Potter, and in case you haven't got the memo yet, I am a Gryffindor, so I like to, you know, show my colors. So, I have some Gryffindor-inspired dishcloths, and I made them watching Harry Potter. 
let's see. This one, the sizing is a little bit off. I don't know, I don't know what happened, but this top one's a little bit smaller. It's okay. If you finger block it, it's no fit. So I'll show you these in a minute. The colors that I used was peaches and cream. Oh, this is the wrong label on there. This is the colorway for black. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is fully <laughs> sugar and cream in the colorway wine. I knew something was up when the yarn label said this was black. I don't think this is black. This is in the colorway wine. And the yellow is Lion Brand Re-Up Yarn. And it works so smooth and easy. And, you know, it helps save water. I recommend this yarn. If Right, I forgot what I was saying. The colorway for this is Sunflower. And this was a full ball. These are both full balls, and this is how much I have left. I like the way that Re-Up unravels, too. That's, it's different than the Shogun Cream. I like it. So, here's this one. And the other dishcloth, which is smaller, looks like this one. And you're probably going to be seeing a lot more of these in the future. Just because these are really simple, easy, fun to make. And if I can work them out like that, then, then I can work them out like that. I'll probably be making more of them. And... I, when I made the first black one right here, my, my mom fell in love with it, and I'm probably going to be making her some. So, but there we go. If I were to name this episode, I'd name it Dishcloth Crazy. Oh, right. So there is something I want to show you guys. So let me pull that up. Okay. Here it is. I don't know how well you can see this. I'm going to see a bag over here. But... What these are is, I want to show you guys that I bagged these 59 hats up for the Hat Not Hate charity. So, one bag at a time. Okay. So, what I did was, I made sure all the hats were tagged, and I stuffed them inside this bag that my dad's uh, medicine came inside of. And I couldn't zip it, so I just stapled the bags shut. So this one I managed to fit 32 hats inside. And the other one I got 27 hats in. I almost forgot, but I was thinking that I wanted to tell you that Hook Over Heels was talking to me earlier. Since she's on vacation right now, I think she came home yesterday saturday but she was telling me that she got some more hats and so she's gonna give them to me whenever she can so yeah there you go i got some 59 hats right here and i'm really excited to donate them and if you're looking for a new charity to donate to i recommend the hat night hate charity all information in the description box below Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!